Hello, this is Larry Berman. You ready to go right into it? Tonight we're going to do chapter, I'm sorry, well, chapter one, part 10, called The Invitation. And then we're going to do part 11, which is called Preparing for the Princess's Royal Dinner. Let's go. First, to recap, like I always do. King Larry rode to his castle in pain as the horse ride is not smooth. Kent helped the king off the horse as he had helped the king onto his mount earlier. The king went in to take a hot bath. After Kent put the horses away, he wept in his wife's arm. His wife's name is Lady Karen. Part 10. The Invitation. The next morning, King Larry sent a message to Princess Alice by way of courier pigeon. The pigeon was released with a half-hour flight to complete. The short message said, Princess Alice, my love, dine with me at Forrester Wayfair Castle Saturday evening as the sun begins to set. It was signed KLJ. That morning, the doctor looked at the king's arm, broken arm and created a cast made of sand, paper, and glue. He was to wear the cast for a month. Then the doctor would re-examine its success. The king was still in pain, but kings trying not to let the public see their pain. Meanwhile, he called Mayor James and Lady Ginger Bee to the castle to help arrange the dinner for Princess Alice. King Larry wanted to see the princess earnestly and wanted to dance with her. Planning had to be perfect. The king also called Lady Cheryl and Gilbert to assist with decorating the pathway leading to the castle. The king had noticed the married couple kissing and dancing in the village. He loved watching castle, loving couples in love. He was becoming quite a romantic king since meeting Alice. Two of Castle Forest Wayfair's residents were assigned to help Cheryl and Gilbert. Their names were Ilya Bay, age 13, and Nova Cove, age 7. Those two were children of Princess Alice's aide, Meredith. Meredith was also the princess's younger sister. Their oldest brother, River Orion, age 19, was in night school at the castle training to be one of the king's soldiers. The younger children were available to assist with chores. River was assigned to help the school, but on put on a demonstration for the king and the princess to enjoy. Right on time, the pigeon arrived at Lady Connie's castle. Now, normally, the bird would arrive at Connie's window ledge, which was how it was trained. Lady Connie was the wife of Sir Francis, a highly honored deceased hero who served the king's father. He died in battle, blocking a sword that was about to kill the king's father. That sword, which took Francis's life, was thrust into his chest by a bad knight named Big Pharma. Pharma died also in the battle as Francis's last act while wounded was to fire his matlock pistol into Big Pharma's head. Francis was honored as the hero who saved King Harold. Princess Alice's guardian angel was named Waynans. From time to time, the angel Waynans would appear to Princess Alice, and the two would sing and worship together. This day, Waynans took hold of the carrier pigeon and directed it directly to the princess's window ledge. Alice read the note from her bedroom window and began to sing for all the castle for all of castle heather to hear they often heard her sing but was puzzled to hear two voices 
Only Alice could see Wayne's, but all could hear them both singing. The two voices became the subject of many folklore tales. The princess never revealed Wayne's identity when asked about the twin voices. The king had a broken arm. The king, with his broken arm, directed the preparation for Princess Alice's special date. Castle Forest Wayfair was busy. Meanwhile, Princess Ali, Alice pondered on a gift to give her king's suitor. She prayed about it, and the answer was given to her. She discovered that King Larry Joshua loved crystal, crystal glass. King Larry was well known for collecting beautiful crystal dishes and vases. But the Holy Spirit revealed to her something that he, the king didn't have. So she summoned the village's famous glassmaker named Hayden to design the, and create her gift to King Larry. She was so excited to present it to her lover. This is the end of part 10 of The Lonely Princess. Part 11, preparing for the princess's royal dinner, is next. What is Princess Alice planning to surprise King Larry with? What will be the king without a queen? What will the king without a queen wear? What will the princess wear? Will the sorcerer interfere with the king's romantic dinner engagement? Read part 11 from this writer as he divulges the answer to those questions and a few surprises. Now, let's go on to part 11. Preparing for the princess's royal dinner. Both castles were busy. Castle Forest Wayfair was busy getting ready for Saturday's reception for Princess Alice. Castle Heather was busy in preparation for King Larry Joshua's courtship with Princess Alice. There was love in the air. The king decided to wear his military uniform because he had earned many medals for bravery. In one battle, the king was out at sea on his royal ship. Word reached his ship that an awful earthquake had devastated the country of Haiti. The king and his men sailed there to render aid. Upon arrival, the king and his men witnessed many injured people from houses and stores crumbling down. Many structures fell on top of the people, crying, agony, and shouts and shouts of sorrow were heard over the largest villages in Haiti. King Larry's warfare skills were not needed there, but his training as a leader was needed. The king also had training in medical procedures. Those skills were utilized for six days where all the injured were cared for. The king and the Americas gave the king of the Americas gave King Larry a medal as Haiti fell under their jurisdiction. Larry Joshua was a hero. Princess Alice did not have a gown appropriate for a royal dinner of this importance, so she called her favorite seamstress, Lady Beebe, to create an elegant dress for her. The princess loved dresses with sparkling gems. Beebe had to work fast to be ready for Saturday. It's not uncommon for the princess's mother to escort her daughter on an event like this. Lady Connie also had to have a new dress designed and created quickly. On Friday, with everyone working hard for final preparation, it rained all day. This was bad news for those fixing up Castle Forest Wayfair, so King Larry went into his private prayer room lit some candles, and prayed to Elohim for divine help. The Most High God, Elohim, loved the king and princess, so before that day was over, the sun came out for a glorious afternoon. Stars also shone brightly above. Saturday morning was picture perfect. Dozens of villagers were on hand to finish getting ready for the dinner party. 
Alice and Connie's dresses were done just in time, just in the time. And those two were in a carriage heading for Castle Forest Wayfair. Alice's gift for King Larry was also ready. Be it made of crystal, it was quite heavy. Alice hoped it wouldn't break on the way to Castle Forest Wayfair. The ride in Lady Connie's carriage was disturbed when a flock of about a hundred black ravens dove on their two horses. Lucifer sent the birds to scare Lady Connie's horses, hoping that they would ride off wildly, killing the princess and her mother. The horses stopped and then attempted to fight the ravens with their front legs. The attack almost worked into the prayers of Lady Connie kicked in. To Alice's surprise, her mother, who is normally a quiet religious person, rebuked the ravens and Lucifer. The prayers calmed the horses. Alice did not know that her mom could be so brave and spiritual. Lady Connie turned to her daughter and said, We Harveys don't know how to lose. Alice saw her mom in a new light that brought a pleasant moment of joy and pride between them. Alice looked at her mom, kissed her cheek, and smiled warmly at her. As Lady Connie's carriage was about a mile from Castle Forest Wayfair, the path road was lined with flowers attached to all the trees heading to the castle. There must have been flowers attached to two or three hundred oak trees. Then, as they got within a quarter mile of the castle, villagers on both sides of the path road waved and shouted, tossing flowers in front of the horses to walk on. Several villagers ran alongside the carriage, which, was, which had slowed considerably. They handed the two women bouquets of flowers. Together, they were handed two dozen bundles of flowers each. They could not stop smiling. Princess Alice couldn't wait to thank her king for his generosity. She wanted to hug and kiss her man. Upon arrival at the castle, trumpets, drums, bells, and flutes played a melody written especially for this event. The king's favorite composer was Sir Ulrich Schnass. The music reinforce the two ladies' huge smiles on their faces. King Larry caused the two to feel special. They were impressed with the king's welcome for them. Their carriage door was opened by a well-dressed royal servant, and King Larry Joshua was seen standing in uniform on the top of the castle steps leading to the castle's entrance. A red carpet was stretched from the carriage to the king's feet. Clapping and music accompanied them to the front of the king. Once the ladies got to within six feet of the king, both ladies curtsied. The king bowed, and cheers and music played, played out even louder. Lady Connie had a secret boyfriend escort her to the castle. Well, we'll discuss that la romance later. The king escorted Princess Alice into the small room just inside the castle. In that small room, with the door closed from the public, they kissed each other as if life itself depended upon it. The king was a bit liberal with his uninjured hand, and, the prince and Princess Alice had to correct the king, stating that it was not appropriate to touch a lady in that manner. The king just smiled from ear to ear and continued to kiss while the princess held his wrist tightly. This is the end of part 11 of The Lonely Princess. Part 12, love, is next. What gift is Princess Alice planning to surprise King Larry with? Will the sorcerer interfere with the king's romantic dinner engagement? What about Lady Connie and her secret boyfriend? Read part 12 from this writer as he divulges the answer to those questions and a few surprises. 
Thank you for watching this video. Guess what's next? Chapter 12, love. Sleep well, sleep tight. Pray to the Lord. Ask him to cover you and protect you. Thank him for your day, for he is worthy of your time and attention. He loves you and wants your very, very best. The word says that eye has not seen nor ear heard the things that God has in store for those that love him. Good night.